Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk some watering hacks for your orchid while you're on vacation. It is vacation season here in my area, but of course I don't take vacations. However, I hope I can show you a few good tricks on how you can keep your orchid hydrated for long periods of time. So you can apply this whenever you just don't have the time or you just have to leave home for a while. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it, it really helps it out. And why not subscribe? It is free and I post multiple times a week. If you're feeling extra about it, consider further supporting the channel by checking out the merch using the affiliate links in the description, becoming a member or using the super thanks option below my videos. Right, let's just start. Right, so the simplest thing you can do is leave your orchid in a little bit of water. If you're using decorative pots, all the better. You don't even have to bring separate dishes or trays. If you use dishes, leave some water in the dish. And this works great for mixes with bark and sphagnum moss, but not only, for mixes of bark as well. So what I would do is water the orchids one day prior to your vacation, prior to leaving, and I would do so by soaking them. And I would soak them for 15 minutes or so, just to make sure that the orchid absorbs enough water and that medium soaks fully before you leave for vacation, especially if you have a prolonged vacation, two weeks and above. Soaking your orchid is a very, very useful thing to do. My Shalariana is a little droopy, she's a little dry, so a soak will do her good. Then I would drain out all of that water and leave in the dish a layer of about an inch or two centimeters or so of water after the pot is already drenched in water. And this will be a sort of a reservoir for your orchid. Most of the times there will be some roots down there which will have access to water even if the medium doesn't drag it up. So bottom line, the orchid roots will have access to some water. Is it an ideal way of keeping your orchid? No. I really don't believe layering is a good thing. I believe that the entire wood should have access to proper water and nutrients and have that good ratio between air and water. But is it good in a pinch? Yeah, absolutely. I've been doing this little hack ever since I started to grow orchids and I had to leave for about two, three weeks for vacation in another country. And if my mom was not available, yeah, that's exactly what I would do. In the vast majority of cases, nothing bad will happen to the roots. They will not suffocate because that level of water will continuously become lower and lower and lower and it will not have time to suffocate roots for two to three weeks or even a month or so. Afterwards, you can return to your normal watering schedule, just like nothing ever happened. So I would forget about the where kids don't like wet feet rule and just enjoy my vacation. That's the easiest and simplest method of keeping your orchids hydrated. Now, if you have a bare-rooted orchid, such as a vanda or even a mount, you can still do this little trick. What I used to do is get a big container, because I had a lot of vandas, and just place them all inside and leave about an inch or two of water on the bottom. Or actually more. I would go like this, maybe 10 centimeter level, because water evaporates faster. There's no medium to hold it there. Surface tension is broken due to the roots, so it's just gonna evaporate really fast. So I would leave quite a big level of water there, 10, 15 centimeters, which I guess about a four or five inch level of water. And hey presto, there you go. It is not ideal, but it is a very good solution in a pinch short term while you're on vacation. And PS, this orchid, Oh, it smells so nice right now. <laughs> Cannot keep what its watering needs, so I need to pot it up really fast, but I just wanted to see it in bloom. However, if your orchid is potted in a different material, more wicking ones such as sphagnum moss, well, we have different tricks. You can, of course, do that trick earlier, but you can also offer it a reservoir. And you don't have to have a self-watering pot for that. You just have to have a glass. So all you need to do is create a connection between the pot and the glass of water through the use of a wick. Here I have a microfiber strand. You can cut one of your old racks that you don't want to use anymore. Just save them. They're good for all sorts of stuff with orchids. And what you need to do is put it in contact with the sphagnum moss. I'll put it at the bottom. I'll use a bamboo skewer and I'll just push it in a little bit, not a whole lot, through one of the drainage holes. Like so, you don't need to do more. And then I'll rest the orchid in the pot and submerge this entire wick in water. Do you see what's happening? it's already starting to wick the water and leave this wick next to the orchid like so. 
This is a good trick if you don't have a whole lot of orchids and you can afford to spend 10 minutes to do this little thing and you don't need a whole lot of materials. This will definitely work with other plants or terrestrial orchids if they're potted in soil because soil is wicking as well. It doesn't really work all that well with combinations of bark and moss and does not work at all in a bark or coconut husk or leka, pure leka, not semi-hydro, since these materials are not wicking. So you need something wicking, something that acts like soil. And sphagnum moss is the greatest material we use with orchids that wicks. So here you go. This is the sort of a reservoir. If you also have the possibility to put the pot further up on a grill or something and feed the wick through that grill, downwards practically creating a sort of a reservoir like this under the pot or actually now that I think about it guys just sit this pot on top of this glass like so and there you have it poof instant self-watering at this point you don't have to worry about anything because the sphagnum moss will continuously absorb that water this is a little bit unstable so you know, maybe go for something a little bit more stable, not a solo cup. But again, I hope you get the idea. I didn't plan this, it just came to me. But yeah, definitely can do that. Awesome, this is a great trick. Yeah, just get yourself some wicks, whatever, and there you go, poof. Instant self-watering. So honestly, if you work off of the other two ideas, I think you're set, you don't need anything else. But I'll just mention a few more things because maybe they will become permanent setups for you. I think self-watering pots are pretty obvious in this discussion. You can keep your orchid with a reservoir throughout the year, not only on vacation, but yeah, when you're on vacation, the self-watering comes in handy. But let's say you don't want to pot your orchid in that self-watering pot that does not have ventilation and things of the sorts. Well, it just has a type of self-watering pot that has a wick which you insert in whatever type of pot you have. And then you can sit the pot, the orchid pot, inside the self-watering container and again, instant self-watering pot. That one works a little bit better with potting mixes that are a little bit wicking. So combinations with sphagnum moss, soil if you have terrestrial orchids or terrestrial plants in general so bark will not work all that well because you do need the potting mix to absorb that water and distribute it at least somewhat evenly throughout the pot if you think that setup is something you might be interested in long term definitely check them out i'll try to find the link for amazon for you guys because i think those are my favorite lechuza pots since you can use an external pot with them they're practically the mask not the pot itself so definitely check that one out also, for setups that do not have a very wicking potting mix, check out the 3D Ping systems. This is quite out there, it's not a cheap system, but I am very happy with it and I recently made a video about it. Pretty much, it's again a different container in which you can sit a standalone pot and what it does is it's automatically soaking the orchid hence why it can work with potting mixes that don't have a lot of water retention since it actually soaks it so it doesn't rely on a wick or something of the sorts and on the medium to grab that water and spread it evenly throughout the pot so i'll link it down below to the video if you didn't know about these things if you didn't know they existed now you do maybe it's something you want to consider throughout the year because it's not worth spending that much money on these just for two weeks of vacation. But I thought it would be a great idea to mention them because if you have one of these, you don't worry about vacation at all. And a few more ideas before I let you go. Try to not overthink it. Most orchids we grow in our homes are super adapted to drought. What they do is when they run out of water, their stomatas close and they keep the openings to a minimum in this way they limit transpiration so even if you don't leave enough water for your orchid don't worry most probably it will be okay it might not look the happiest but it will bounce back right away unless you are gone for months and months your orchid should be just fine these things are tough as nails Unless, of course, you're dealing with a Nelly Eiler or a Miltoniopsis or a Mastavalia or a Dracula, things of the sorts. But everything else is pretty tough. Don't worry all that much about vacation. And you might have noticed I didn't mention anything about having a friend or a neighbor come and water your orchids. I would suggest you don't do that. Most of the bad things that happen are when you ask somebody who doesn't know orchids to keep your orchids watered because they really don't know. And if they happen to put water in the crowns and everywhere, combined with the fact that maybe all of your windows will be closed, 
Uh, you don't want to leave the house with the windows open, right? It's going to be stale air. It's going to be no movement there, breeding ground for bacteria and pathogens. You're going to come back to crown rot. Better come back to dehydration than crown rot. So crown rot, stem rot, um, and root rot are just not worth it. Which is not worth it. I have so many viewers telling me they left the orchids with somebody and they came back to just horrifying disasters. So I would avoid that. To be honest, we can do it ourselves. Alrighty, so I hope this video was useful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos from me on other types of plants, just check my second channel. It is linked in the description. But most importantly for orchid stuff, subscribe to this channel. So that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!